Thanks, Jen. Grandmaster Patrick Wolf, who I've known for many years. I think the first time we played, Patrick, you beat me when, when Harvard played against CCNY uh, in the Pan Am games. Oh, wow. There's been a lot of water under the bridge since our Good college days. days. Yeah. Uh, the, you're in finance now. The markets have been up and down and crazy, and so has the chess here in St. Louis. What has been your impression of these amazing games? Well, I, I'm really excited by the games today, um, especially the Aronian and the Nakamura games. Um, it's, it's good fighting chess. It's a lot of fun to see. You know, these guys are really going after each other. The, the top players, like, they don't play boring. They really go after it, and it's, it, I think it's a lot of fun. Now, back in the day, we had elite tournaments, but did you ever expect or suspect that we'd have chess live streaming online, big studios, uh, it, it's confessional booths. No, it's, it's, quite a bit the, has changed, hasn't it? I love the confessional booth. Uh, no, I, I never did, although I did write the um, Complete Idiot's Guide to Chess almost 20 years ago, and I confidently asserted in 1997 that within um, five years, you'd be able to follow a chess tournament on your, on your mobile phone. And I was off by about five or 10 years, but I never imagined how amazing it would end up being, and it just keeps going, it's great. You are a good friend of Vishwanathan Anand's. You were a second to him yep. when he was b vying for the world championship title yep. back in the 90s. Uh, you had breakfast with him this morning. What mm -hmm. were his spirits when he was you chatting with him? Oh, I think he's fine. I mean, obviously, he's disappointed by the first couple rounds in the tournament. But um, Vishy's played a lot of chess and seen a lot of chess and knows how to bounce back. And we were just talking about how things have been going and, and more sort of personal, you know, over the years than anything else. We did um, spend some time talking about how computers have really changed chess. And it's, you know, for an old fogey like me who hasn't played really seriously for 20 years, it's just amazing to see how the players both use computers as a tool and have really adapted their play. So you get people like Wesley So or Hikaru Nakamura, or, you know, who really sort of seem to be shaped by the computer. And, and Anand was saying how um, you, the, the range of moves that the, the top players can um, just sort of think about these days is much wider, he thinks, because the computer has really sort of taught us how much more is possible. When you're looking at these young players, who are you most impressed by? Well, I'm impressed by all of them, but I mean, I, you've got to be really excited about the Americans, right? Nakamura, Caruana, and so, I mean, it's, it's incredible that we have three of the top 10 players in the world, in the United States, you know, sort of almost by stealth over the last five years. It's incredible. Um, and uh, I mean, of course, Magnus Carlsen is, I mean, to be excited, I mean, yeah, I think the secret's out, <laughs> but it's pretty amazing to see just how good he's been with this incredibly strong generation, I think the strongest of all time, to still have someone who's sort of dominant by that many, you know, by that many points, and, and it's amazing. Well, you made a prediction in 97, about five years from now. I'm going to put you on the spot again. What do you predict for chess in the, in the next five years? Okay, um, my prediction, for whatever it's worth, is that in some way, the internet is going to really change the way um, we follow chess. I think so far what we've done is we've taken the way that we are used to following chess and put it on the internet. And the combination of the internet and the fact that computers are so good and are only going to get better and better and better, there's going to be some way to put that together in a different way. I don't know what that's going to look like, but I think, I think that will be the next big frontier. That and eventually cyborgs will be the best chess players. <laughs> well, we appreciate your insights. Thank you very much for joining us. Oh, thanks and, for having and, uh, me. Keep enjoying these games. Absolutely. Grandmaster Patrick Wolf, two-time former champ of the United States, sharing his insights with us. Back to you guys. Thank so you. do cyborgs cry when they lose a game? Yes, they do. No, the idea is they don't. Right? They do. <laughs> Everybody cries. Maurice, I just had a question <laughs> for uh, Patrick before we uh, let him escape uh, before today. Okay. Be be before we came on the show, uh, Patrick and I were talking about how do you get chess more popular? How do you bring it? Uh, he had a, he l w w playing off the confessional booth, um, what uh, Patrick uh, made a suggestion of how you glimpse into the mind of a grandmaster and uh, remembering the Monrovia idea, Patrick, go ahead, take it. What, what, what we were talking about earlier. Oh, we were just sort of brainstorming, right? But I, I kind of like this idea that um, you figure out a way where the players actually are, are able to, to analyze just by themselves during the game. 
and we get to see the analysis and compare it in real time to what the computer is telling us. So we actually, you know, you ever see like poker um, where like you sort of know what the hand is and then you sort of, but you don't know what the card is going to be? Well, here the tension would be you see what moves people are, are looking at. Like, you know, like the Aronian game. What, what's Wesley looking at right now? And you could see whether he's thinking of a brilliant defense or a losing line because the computer will tell you. You bring we, up Wesley, there was some, there was a lot of controversy in the U.S. Championship when Wesley was defaulted in the game for taking notes. And the argument is that if you start having players allowed to put down some kind of movement notes of, to themselves, that that would assist them in their thinking process. Do you buy that? No, I think actually the, 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 the crime there was that he was using um, analog, um, sort of old school, just, to re just private notes for himself. It should have been um, digital in full flower for all of us to see that we so we can see whether he's right or wrong. I mean I think like I think the the game the game part of what we love about chess is its constancy, right? I mean it you know it is essentially the same game it's been, I don't know, sort of 100 200 years and it goes back over a thousand years. But the world is changing quickly now, right? And we can take this game we love and maybe adapt it a little bit. Um, because we have this amazing medium, the internet. As, as Yasser was, when Yasser and I were talking, Yasser was saying, you know, the, the TV's never been the, the muse for chess, but the internet um, can be. Um, I think there, there are probably some interesting um, things we can do there. But uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to enjoy the chess. It's a pretty exciting day today. I'm really glad I came. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for those insights. Fascinating <laughs> stuff. We'll see how it goes in the next five years if Patrick is behind the times or ahead of the times, we'll see. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure.